good evening to all the viewers who are watching live and will be watching on a recorded version uh this is me orko mukherjee your it manager and we have wasted 5 minutes uh, for setting up our uh, background uh, we are sorry for that it was a technical issues from our tech tech team so without wasting any more time let's just jump into our 30 seconds countdown time प्रलय शर्मा प्रलय सर Uh, we have a role reversal in the uh, credit line today. Over to you, Pralay, to introduce and call on our inaugurator tonight. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Bhutan Mukherjee, program director. Uh, I believe that uh, we are continuing our CME. for long period and it's been successful successful one and in fact this cme is uh, being spreaded across the country across the globe in fact and today is the online online cme this is uh, 71th of a cme today uh, by nih alumni association uh, we have a topic of to discuss a, a journey with 300 cases of degenerative joint diseases and as usual it has been, it is it, it it will be discussed by our very renowned physician dr devnara and kallani and in second part we will get a discussion on alcohol abuse disorder an overview and its homeopathic uh, perspective by dr shiv narayan jana and uh, today we do have inaugurator inaugurator uh, dr rajat chattopadhyay uh, he happens to be the principal of calcutta homeopathy medical college and to uh, today's inaugurator is dr uh, uh, today's moderator is dr abdul matin molla is a professor in department of community medicine of nehru homeopathic medical college and hospital new delhi uh, to begin our uh, begin our cme today i will request uh, today's inaugura uh, inaugurator uh, the principal of the calcutta homeopathy medical college dr professor rajat chatrapadhyay to be on the screen and to inaugurate today's cme thank you so much dr rajat chatrapadhyay please thank you thank you with a very good evening thank you all dr vidyut dr pralay sharma and all the others uh, of the national institute of homeopathy alumni association it is a uh, nice part to sharing of delivering uh, any sharing lecture on behalf of myself as alumni of national institute of homeopathy and it is the 71st as uh, dr vidyut and dr pralay already told that it is the 71st alumni which is successfully uh, going on and all along the world all the alumnus and it is a nice one part of a sharing of views among all the alumni and all others also and the topic today's wonderful topic as dr pralay told that is the degenerative disorders and degenerative disorders with the 300 cases in national institute of homeopathy which is by the speaker is renowned dr dev narayan kollani we are very well aware about dr dev narayan kollani he is expertise in this field his prescription is unique prescription and 
that in degenerative disorders because right now we can't say it is that only the arthritis like osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis or any type of autoimmune mediated arthritis it is are very much alarming in nature but the different type of degenerative joint diseases the degenerative joint diseases not only confined to only osteoarthritis it 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 uh, without any specific terminology only degeneration can be seen even from the very young age so it is the very burning topic uh, being autoimmune or not autoimmune being uh, the way for the very aged one or for the young one being from homeopathic perspective uh, in the syphilitic psychotic base or non syphilitic psychotic base or soric base so multiple things can be uh, discussed here on and uh, we we should not forget the very uh, good experience or prolonged experience of dr kollani which he should share we will eager to hear uh, the share uh, his experience particularly in these degenerative joint diseases because when we were student at that time degenerative joint disease usually only indicates to osteoarthritis right now uh, we can say that multiple very uh, wide domain of uh, syndrome come under degenerative joint disease so we should be eager to hear this and the another one that is the our second speaker our first speaker is dr shibnarayan jana he is very young energetic and from the very beginning he is very academic his topic is uh, wonderful it is the new one that is alcohol abuse we are very well aware about the alcohol abuse but the what is the effect of alcohol abuse in homeopathic perspective it is very new one because uh, overview of alcohol abuse we are well aware about this we are well about about the fatty liver right now fatty liver is going uh, even non alcoholic fatty liver is a very burning uh, topic right now today but the alcoholic abuse in homeopathic perspective is the new one so it is a challenging one to dr jana and i know dr jana is very academic uh, person he will wonderfully share his experience and his expertise in this field i will be where i'll very eager to hear dr shibnaranjana particularly on homeopathic perspective of alcohol abuse because all of the homeopathic fraternity they are uh, very much aware about the concept of homeopathy in these type of disorders uh, alcohol abuse like that another thing we must say that we have to emphasize on the uh, skill of the prescription the skill it is the clinical skill we are going through very good all the students they are going through the clinical skills they are going through the bhms md phd everything is going on but the prescription skill the art of case taking the art of prescription the art of a uh, weight art of weight and watch art of second prescription art of repetition art of potency that is in something is going to be oblivion uh, it is my apprehension so i must congratulate Our, our National Institute of Homeopathy Alumni Association, because most of the topic is based on the these clinical skills, the sharing of views. So we must continue these type of seminars with the expertise in the field, with their one from the very expertise old one with uh, very experienced, and another from the very new one with the energetic field. So these type of combination, like Dr. Kolladi and Dr. Shibnana and Jana, will continue for our coming. uh uh, uh cm is must be then we will enrich ourselves so without taking uh, much more time i will invite our first speaker dr shibnara and jana who will be talking on alcohol abuse and uh is overview of alcohol abuse and particularly it's in homeopathic perspective so thank you all again i must say again congratulate our all of the organizers the main organizers like dr biddu dr prolay for organizing such event in a very very critical period when the art of homeopathy is something in crisis uh, so we have to we have the responsibility to uh, make it live and this type of cme can only make it live so uh, dr shibnaran jana you please continue thank you i at the outset uh, beginning i would like to thank national institute of homeopathy alumni association for uh, giving me an opportunity to share some views on actually the condition is not uh, 
alcohol abuse disorder but it is actually alcohol use disorder well this is also uh, commonly is uh, uh, said as alcohol abuse disorder also uh, so uh, professor dr rajat chatterji i'd like to thank you sir uh, for your encouraging words and uh, trusting upon our ability my ability to share something about alcohol use disorder i must share Um, sir, let me help you with that, with the sharing part. Uh, are you finding it, sir? I'm um, sorry, you have muted yourself. Uh -huh. Is it visible? My slides are visible? Um, no, not yet. Uh, let me just first guide you with that. Sir. Okay. Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, are you seeing at... Uh, I mean, sir, arrow button or something in a blue, like right in the middle of where you are seeing that audio and camera uh, cam part, right in that middle. In that portion, you will be seeing a present. It is written like a present or something like that. It's written like that. Are you seeing it? Uh, there is one uh, mute stop cam setting. Then? now visible uh screen is visible yes sir yes 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 sir yeah yeah, yeah. it's visible yeah, uh first open your slides once yeah. huh. uh, now uh, uh, put on the uh, slideshow uh -huh. slide show. Uh, is it visible now uh, now yes yes just click on the hide button Hide. It's right beside the stop sharing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now uh, you can continue. Is it now visible? Yes, sir. Okay. So, alcohol use disorder. When it comes to alcohol, we know mm. this is now the condition is now very much rampant world over. A lots of things are happening on alcohol. People are using alcohol like anything. Gradually, people are using more and more alcohol. As the financial status of people are improving gradually, more and more people are taking a resort to alcohol drinking. The social pressures, emotional upsets, and the desire to... Uh, desire to enjoy enjoyment and all these are very much rampant nowadays and sorry I, it is taking a little time no issue i am just coming uh, Uh, but alcohol use disorder, if we see in psychiatry, it comes under substance use disorder. Substance use disorder is a complex condition in which there is uncontrolled use of a substance despite its harmful consequences. People with substance use disorder have an intense focus on using a certain substances such as alcohol, tobacco or illicit drugs. To the point where the person's ability to function in day-to-day -day life becomes impaired. People keep using the substance even when they know it is causing or will cause problems. The most severe substance use disorders are sometimes called addictions. There are many kinds of substance use disorders, you know. Tobacco is very important of them. Cigarettes, chewing tobacco, snuff. Vapor cigarettes, cigars, 
alcohol including beer wine and all distilled liquors cannabinoids that is marijuana hashish hash oil and edible cannabinoids opioids heroin methadone buprenorphine oxycodone and likes depressants like benzodiazepines and barbiturates stimulants like cocaine amphetamine methamphetamine methylphenidate and atomoxetin and hallucinogens hallucinogens that is lsd mescaline mdma that is uh, commercially known as ecstasy now how do we define alcohol use disorder dsm 5 defines alcohol use disorder as a maladaptive pattern of alcohol consumption so alcohol use disorder is a maladaptive pattern of alcohol consumption in simple words impaired capacity of an individual to withdraw or control alcohol use despite its deleterious social occupational or other health consequences this is what is alcohol use disorder defined simply if we go through the history alcohol when it was discovered so we'll see lots of historical literatures are available and if we go through archaeological findings we can see we can trace back the discovery of alcohol to millions of years back you will see that alcohol was discovered by the prehistoric man even tens of millions years back the archaeological findings and research on these issues have brought out that one of the enzymes that is required for alcohol metabolism that is alcohol dehydrogenase so there are many sub family of alcohol dehydrogenase enzymes so one of them is very important ald4 alcohol dehydrogenase 4 adh4 sorry alcohol dehydrogenase 4 so alcohol dehydrogenase 4 it has been found that even before 10 million years back when the people the prehistoric men our ancestors were adapting to terrestrial lifestyle into the jungles during that time the alcohol dehydrogenase 4 enzyme the gene for this got mutated and this subform or isoform H4 and this mutates to some people within some people the more ability to metabolize alcohol so this is an uh, absolutely excellent finding you can see so it's too early or too premature to comment on that that we can very easily correlate this phenomenon with the findings in our medicine syphilinum that familial tendency to alcoholism no it's too premature but we can find some shadow of this genetic inheritance theory towards the alcoholism. So, many stories are there and many literatures are now available to see whether the, what is the history of alcoholism in the prehistoric times. What we find in history and writings, one of the very uh, 
queer or very interesting phenomenon we found there is a mention in jataka in the buddhist tales in the buddhist tales it is mentioned that one of the persons named sura used to visit the foots of himalayas in the search of merchandise so once he went through the jungle and forest and he came to see a big tree with a big hollow that hollow was uh, close that big tree close to the big tree there are myrobalan plants myrobalan you know harad त्रिफला जो होता है आमलो की हरित की एंड बहेड़ा सो हरित की हरत देर ऑज अनदर प्लांट हरत एंड सम एगे प्लांट वेर देर एगे मेमरी कैन वी है मेडिसिन सो द फ्रूट्स ऑफ दिस वेथ ड्यूरिंग द रेन व्हाट हैपन्ड विद इन द होल ऑफ द ट्री द रेन वाटर यूज्ड टू accumulate and this harad and other fruits of local plants used to fall into the hollow and over a period of time they went on getting fermented there is a natural paddy natural paddy plantation nearby so birds and others animals they used to when they were feeding on those paddy birds when they were feeding on those paddies they used to fall also in the in that tree hollow and that hollow we know that uh, crops when uh, fermented by yeast can produce alcohol so yeast is a very primitive creature and that used to ferment these crops and to produce ethyl alcohol so the produce of this phenomena used to become a red liquid and sura uh, could see this red liquid and drank on this red liquid and nearby there was an ascetic ascetic means like buddha there is some other person who used to practice religious practices and the life of renunciation so sura approached varun sura approached varun that this is a very wonderful liquid we could discover and together they saw that the birds who drank on into that liquid they used to fail fell down and after a while after a few hours they used to fly away chirping so we can see how a uh, human being came to discover alcohol it's not only that it has been said that probably it is alcohol that has given rise to our civilization because people started doing agriculture only to avail these crops and to ferment these although it was not very tasty but after drinking this they used to feel elated and gay and joyous and all so they used to bank upon agriculture so it is said in research records also they say that probably uh, it is alcohol which compelled our uh, ancestors to go for agriculture 
so this is a very interesting story that i have shared with you so alcohol which was discovered by sura and baruna used to be named as sura and baruni ah uh, this information i have already shared with you the mutation of adh4 was effectively ubiquitous in our ancestors by 10 million years ago we can imagine 10 million years so i have already shared with you archaeological findings trace the presence of alcohol 13 millennia ago in one of the archaeological study finding we can see that in the caves of israel the primitive man in the caves of israel they used to dig stone hollows on the floor of the cave and within these hollows there is archaeological findings and proof that they used to brew brewery we know brewery and winery when it comes to alcohol so they used to brew alcohol the history is of 13000 years back 13000 is very less when you compare it to 10 million years back so across the previous literature various vedas they say that various vedas they say that there are mention of alcohol in rig veda there is mention of alcohol in atharva veda so you see in rig veda sanhita we find soma the spirit as liquor that is associated with the moon deity with the same name you see soma is the other name of moon and they have named the moon with soma and people and this phenomenon has been praised throughout the rig veda sanhita it means that the value people used to give to the spiritus liquor during that time even during that time so alcohol has remained a valuable has occupied a valuable part in people's life throughout the history prehistoric ages moon plant that is sarcostema brevis stigma yields a milky juice that produces an intoxicating drink though there are positive references towards alcohol in ancient text gradually what happened even in the vedas and other religious scriptures and earlier texts and history we find that they gave alcohol a very high place that al Uh, earlier water was being offered for uh, spiritual and uh, religious offerings to deities and gods but when people uh, came to know about alcohol and liquor water uh, honey milk all these things gradually were replaced by alcohol so we can see how much value people used to give to alcohol so that these things occupied so much space in people's life but during that time also as they used to say that it is a divine liquid divine liquor gradually the bad effects of alcohol were also became to the observation of some very thoughtful and renowned people over time like we'll see gradually manu what happened in manu smriti you will see that manu has condemned liquor like anything he even pronounced lots of punishment 
to people who used to drink alcohol and he altogether recommended stoppage of production of alcohol and all while manuj uh, the harsh and penance that is penalty he tried to impose upon people who drink alcohol could not deter people from drinking but buddha played some the game of love but buddha say buddha treated people with compassion while dharma sutra prescribed drinking hot boiling water to a drinker earlier during the time of manu and some other literature they used to recommend to people that they should drink alcohol eh, drink hot boiling water those who will drink alcohol they will be punished by drinking hot boiling water but buddha's prescription was love manu's strict rules failed while buddha's compassion tolerance and sympathy and love succeeded in bringing down the use of alcohol in the society kautilya the minister of emperor chandragupta he appointed superintendent of liquor so you'll see that kautilya also condemned the drinking of alcohol charaka the second century medical giant he was the ayurvedic physician the second century ayurvedic physician after christ he studied alcoholism in much detail he has given he has pictured all the symptoms of alcohol use disorder and he also recommends ayurvedic treatment for the alcohol use disorder and charaka also associated people with three type of drinking as per the their constitution that is bata pitta kapha bata pitta and kapha depending upon their constitution charaka recommended that you should drink if at all with some good wholesome food and he recommended drinking with specific prescription as per the constitution or the miasma that we find in ayurveda in post gupta period the problem of drinking further deteriorated alauddin khilji in 13th century he tried to impose some restriction but failed since people could produce alcohol by different means akbar the great he also tried to curb the alcohol menace but could not succeed much although he allowed some pubs or taverns during the time of akbar young and old hindu and muslim rich and poor freely indulged in two vices wine and omen indifferent to religious prohibitions or consequences as far as their means and health permitted them in 1790 british government started excise rule one of the bishops in his writing said the purpose of the of government was to make money you just make a note of this point the bishop is writing the purpose of the british government is to make money by taxing one of the vices of the human beings but not to pulverize the vice vices ko control karna government ka purpose hai nahi the purpose is of the government is to make money out of one of the bad habits or vice of human beings the constitution of india article 
allows our states to impose ban on all intoxicating drinks and drugs except for medical use. As of now, in India, alcohol is banned in some five, six states like Manipur. With some relaxation in Manipur, the tribals can brew alcohol. It is allowed in some areas, tribal districts, they are allowed. Else, in Manipur, alcohol is banned. In Mizoram and Nagaland, alcohol is banned. The first Indian state to ban in alcohol is Gujarat. In Gujarat, it is also banned. In Bihar, it is banned. In Lakshadweep, it is banned. Commercially important alcohols. Methanol is also known as wood alcohol. It is more toxic than ethanol, however, and may cause blindness or death if large amounts of inhaled, large amounts are inhaled or ingested. Ethanol is called grain alcohol because it is often made from grains such as corn, wheat, rye, and barley. You know, ethanol, a uh, uh, the uh, factories or industry that produces alcohol sometimes are known as brewery. Those alcohols produced from barley or grain, they are known as brewery. And there is another winery. Those who use, uh, uh, that is, grapes and some other fruits, uh, they are known as winery. Isopropyl alcohol, it is made by indirect hydration of propylene. Isopropyl alcohol is commonly used as an industrial solvent and as a rubbing alcohol applied to the skin at 60 to 95 percent concentrations. It immediately denatures proteins, hence used in hand sanitizers. Standard drink. The literature somewhat differs in this. That is, 8 gram is used to be a standard drink if you go through uh, forensic books text uh, who recommends 14 gram of pure alcohol as a standard drink people who uh, drinks 360 ml of beer have one standard drink five ounces of wine have one standard drink 1.5 ounces of distilled spirits that is gin rum tequila vodka and whiskey they have one standard drink Blood alcohol concentration. See, we'll see the alcohol metabolism after a few uh, slides or just, just following. Blood alcohol concentration is influenced by the fact that how quickly alcohol is emptied from the stomach and the extent of metabolism during the first pass through the stomach and liver. Alcohol doesn't need any digestion. 20% of alcohol is absorbed by the stomach or rest 80% of alcohol is absorbed by the small intestine. And 90% of the alcohol is metabolized in the liver. So what happens when different levels of Blood alcohol concentration, we come through. 0.02 to 0.04 percent, people feel relaxed. There is a sensation of warmth, high, minor impaired judgment. You see, why the sensation of warmth? Because alcohol causes vasodilatation. Alcohol causes vasodilatation. So, there is a sensation of warmth. But Actually, it is not increasing the temperature of the body. So, we must be very cautious. People who drink must be very cautious that actually it is not increasing the body temperature but only causing vasodilatation. And further by vasodilatation, people may go on losing temperature by convection and may lose. Uh, the body temperature and become rather hypothermic. So, if anybody thinks 
that during winter we can drink much alcohol and we can avoid the covering and all so this is a false belief even the patient may die out of hypothermia so this is one of the what of cause and i must start here 0.05 to 0.07 percent there is a buzzed sensation relaxation euphoria lower inhibition minor impairment you see normally i'm coming later okay 0.8 to 0.1 is legally impaired our blood alcohol level that is legally allowed is up to 0.07 percent once you reach 0.08 percent you are legally become punishable if you commit any mistake say for drunk driving and all so there is breathalyzer that can detect drunk driving so at various levels you can see when it is 0.31 percent and up the people may be affected by coma 300 percent when 400 milligram percent hota hai, then the patient may die at any point of time alcohol metabolism principally alcohol is metabolized by three enzymes alcohol dehydrogenase aldehyde dehydrogenase and cytochrome p450 and catalase alcohol dehydrogenase converts alcohol to acetaldehyde aldehyde dehydrogenase converts aldehyde to acetate you see ADH is more abundant in liver. Some ADH is also found in mouth and esophagus and also in stomach. And the metabolism of alcoholism, alcohol starts very easily from the upper GI tract. Catalase, you see in chronic alcoholism, the brain is lacking in the enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase. The alcohol very easily spreads everywhere. It can cross the blood brain barrier, mixes with uh, water, and spreads in every compartment where there is water. And depending upon the blood circulation in that organ, the level of alcohol is there in that part or tissue. So the brain is lacking in alcohol dehydrogenase. But the brain is having catalase and cytochrome P450. These enzymes in brain metabolizes alcohol to acetate and thereby helps brain to produce ketone bodies and avail energy from ketone. So there is acidosis in alcoholism. And the very brain is very much in danger of uh lacking glucose normally brain receives its energy from glucose but when it from ketone bodies so there can rise various problems it is hypothesized that upon chronic alcohol intake brain starts using acetate rather than glucose as a source of energy non-oxidative pathway of alcohol breakdown produces fatty acid ethyl esters and phosphatidic acid Genetic variation in ADH and ALDH. I have already said something about the genetic variation. This genetic variability influences a person's susceptibility to developing alcoholism and alcohol-related tissue damage. You see, I have read highlighted the genetic variability influences a person's susceptibility to developing alcoholism. Matlab, whether you are going to develop alcoholism or not, this is decided by your genetic constitution. Thereby, when we say the familial tendency to alcoholism in our homeopathic literature. A study published in 2014 looked at evolution of an alcohol dehydrogen enzyme named ADH4, which is one of many that break down alcohol in our bodies. Because it is present in the mouth, foot pipe and stomach, ADH4 is the first such enzyme to up with alcohol we consume you see another red highlighted thing is adh4 is 40 times better at breaking down ethanol 
then other adh varieties other adh enzymes there is sub family of adh enzymes many adh are available so adh 4 is 40 times better at breaking down alcohol and those who are familiarly or genetically alcoholic they are having high levels of adh 4 in their body so alcohol can induce lots of diseases complications like if we name a few that Vernix encephalopathy, cardio, cardiomyopathy, stroke, cirrhosis, liver cancer, colon cancer, acute and chronic pancreatitis, oral and esophageal cancer, breast cancer, depression, dementia, impotency, infertility. So lots of diseases, fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. If the pregnant mother is taking resort to alcohol, they should be advised to stop immediately. The fetal liver is lacking in alcohol metabolizing enzymes. And this can give rise to microencephaly in this fetus. So this is a very, very severe complication of alcoholic uh, alcoholism in pregnant ladies. Now let's come to assessment of alcoholism. How we assess alcoholism in psychiatry. There are few set criteria and assessment methods of alcoholism disorder. That is CAGE criteria, audit criteria, DSM-5 criteria, ICD-11 criteria. CAGE criteria is nothing but have you ever felt to cut down upon your drinking? Have you, have anybody ever annoyed you by criticizing your drinking? Have you ever felt guilty feeling about drinking? And have you ever taken alcohol, consumed alcohol the fa as a first thing in the morning? So this is an eye opener. When you start, Matlab, you are having some withdrawal symptom and you can't do without alcohol. You can't do without alcohol in the morning to stable your nerves. So if answer to any of the two questions is yes, the person is suffering from alcohol use disorder. The second thing is audit criteria. Audit stands for alcohol use disorder identification test. This is proposed by WHO. There are two sets of audit criteria. One is physician served and the other is self answered. There are 10 questions. You can see how often do you have a drink containing alcohol? Never. The mark is zero. Monthly or less, two to four times in a month, two to three times. How many drinks containing alcohol do you have on a typical day when you are drinking? How often do you have six or more drinks on one occasion? One drink means that what we have seen, 14 grams. You see, the definition of one drink differs from country to country. In some countries, it is 8 grams. And in some countries, in uh, uh, say for Scandinavia, Scandinavian countries, uh, it is uh, 20 grams. But the US and WHO standard is 14 gram. How many drinks containing alcohol do you have on a typical day? We have finished this. Ah, four. How often during the last year you have found that you were not able to stop drinking once you had started? How often during the last year have you failed to do what was normally expected from you because of drinking? How often during the last year have you needed a fast drink in the morning to get yourself going after a heavy drinking session? How often during the last year have you had a feeling of guilt or remorse after drinking? So depending upon these questions, the points are calculated, score is calculated and the patient is leveled at whether he is having how much, whether mild, moderate or severe. 
DSM five five criteria. Have you ever seen? Uh, had uh, had you ever uh, in the past year have you had times when you ended up drinking more or longer than you intended? More than once wanted to cut down to stop drinking, spent a lot of time drinking, seek from drinking, and the after effects. Wanted a drink so badly you couldn't think of anything else. Found that drinking or being sick interfered home or family, job travels, school problems. Continue drink even trouble when there is trouble with your family and family or friends. Given up or cut back on activity you found important. Your interest, pleasure, say for you find pleasure in playing basketball or volleyball or badminton or like. So you have given up those pleasurable acts to take resort to drinking. More than once gotten into situations or after drinking that increased your chances of getting hurt. Continue to drink even though it was making you feel depressed or anxious, adding to another health problem. Had to drink much more than you once did to get the effect you want or found that your usual number of drinks had much less effect than before. Found that when the effects of alcohol were wearing off, you had withdrawal symptoms, trouble sleeping, sickness, restlessness, nausea, sweating. So all the withdrawal symptoms are there. These are some ICD-11 criteria. ICD-11 criteria is found in chapter 6, mental, behavioral and neurodevelopmental disorders. Disorders due to substance use and addictive behaviors. You'll see the addictive behaviors and substance use is not only limited to substance use. Addictive behaviors, say for internet addict, gaming addict, gambling addict, these also come under this chapter. So, the ICD-11 is also the first ever that is a pattern of episodic or recurrent continuous use of alcohol with two or more symptoms, impaired control of use, loss of control, increasing precedence of alcohol use over other aspects of life, salience, physiological features that you have got neuroadaptation, tolerance, matlab, earlier you used to get the elation or joy once you consume say for two or three drinks but now you need five or six drinks to get that same kick or pleasure that is your tolerance withdrawal symptoms i have already seen repeated use of substance to prevent withdrawal symptoms a period of at least 12 months or continuous daily or almost daily for at least three months Alcohol dependence, current use or continuous, alcohol dependence, current use or episodic, alcohol dependence, early full remission, alcohol dependence, sustained partial remission, alcohol dependence, sustained full remission, alcohol dependence, unspecified. Additional clinical features of dependence, craving, withdrawal symptoms, tolerance, physical health consequences, psychosocial consequences. Comorbid mental illness, mood disorder, anxiety disorder, ADHD, OCD, and CD. There are some important legal issues associated with alcohol. 50A, the person drinking in public or any place of worship. There is one case that the person is uh, drinking in his own land. But you can drink on your own land. That is not legally... Uh, legally uh, 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 punishable but if that is accessible to the view of public then again you can't use alcohol in that place even if it's your own land so there are fine twists railway act section 155 it doesn't allow you to carry alcohol while traveling in the rail ipc 510 misconduct in public by a drunken person one of the daily high court orders is that one person can store 9 liters of whiskey and 18 liters of beer. There was one case in the Delhi High Court. The police moved one case and the High Court saw there are five adult men in the family 
and they have uh, stored some 52 or something like liters of whiskey or like uh, matlab, uh, not 52 liters of whiskey uh, matlab, it is less than 45 so the court observed that if there is five mem fem members in the family adults uh, so you can drink and it is not more than 45 liters of whiskey so they can uh, store that much of whiskey at home sir uh, Dr. Jana, sir, sir, one request. Uh, so there yeah. is another uh, speaker, and our time is limited. So you are requested okay. to kindly complete it by next ten minutes. Uh, 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 sir, my uh, is visible slide. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, okay. Yes. Thank you. So I am just uh, uh, speeding up. Uh, you see, uh, the government earns revenue to the tune of 180,000 crores per year in India. And there is an important judgment by Kerala High Court that drinking is not a fundamental right. You cannot claim that I have a right to drinking, even if you have money or if you can, even if we can uh, access. Um, Abdul, sir, we can't hear you, sir. Second defeat. Breathe analyzer. You see? We, based on Henry's law, uses infrared rays, which is absorbed by alcohol in breath. Alcohol concentration in 20, 100 ml of breath is equal to alcohol in 1 ml of blood. Under Motor Vehicle Act, lower limit of driving vehicle in India is 30 mg percent. Stages of alcohol poisoning, stage of excitement, 0 to 50 mg percent. Euphoria 50 to 100, excitement 100 to 150, stage sir, of import. Sir, Dr. Jana, can you hear me, sir? Yeah, yeah. Sir, doc sir uh, today there is another speaker and our time is limited. Okay, okay. So, I have I have got that you have my humble request. Yes, yes. I am yes, just, yes. just, uh, just packing within 10 minutes. Yes, sir. I am just packing with it. When the alcohol... Uh, concentration is more than 400 milligram percent you can see that this becomes fatal and the patient may die complications warnik encephalopathy korsakoff psychosis bignani disease that is demyelination of corpus callosum clinical presentation is based on cognitive impairment gait disturbance seizures and coma what are the withdrawal symptoms we find Nausea, vomiting, headache, auditory disturbances, agitation, paroxysmal sweating, visual disturbances, tremor, clouding of sensorium, orientation, anxiety. After 6 to 8 hours, coarse tremors, nausea, vomiting, 12 to 24 hours, alcoholic hallucinosis. This can be tactile, this can be visual, this can be auditory. After 24 to 48 hours, alcohol withdrawal seizure can happen. And 48 to 2 to 3 days, ke baad, delirium tremens. That is the Lilliputian hallucination. This is one of the important findings. The patient sees everything as small. Delirium tremens. As the name suggests, there is delirium and there is tremor. This can happen after two to three days. After severe injury or acute infections like pneumonia. Delirium and tremors. Treatment is oral chlorodiazepoxide. Severe symptoms, IV lorazepam. Thiamine is there in everywhere during alcohol treatment because it causes disturbance in the B1 metabolism. Reverse tolerance. You will see that decreased amount of alcohol can get one person same pleasure. How this is happening? Because there is end organ damage due to chronic intake of alcohol. As a result, Alcohol consumed is not metabolized and will be present in blood for a long time and continue giving pleasure. Markers of heavy alcoholism, if we go for investigation, we will find increased MCV, increased uric acid, increased gamma glutamyl transferrin, increased carbohydrate deficient transferrin, raised GGT and CDT, that is carbohydrate deficient transferrin and gamma glutamyl transferrin, is highly specific for alcoholism. Some diagnostic tests, macro tests, Ojelka and Hein, steam distillation after acidification, 
we can uh, uh, test uh, all uh, various body fluids for alcohol content uh, saliva urine blood so urine uh, so steam inhalation a uh, steam distillation after acidification and precipitation by national solution and south get alcohol to carbon dioxide breathe carter test micro test cavet the test is based on oxidation of potassium dichromate for estimation of alcohol nicol's test gas liquid chromatography is the best investigation for alcohol since alcohol is a volatile substance there is one phenomena melanomy phenomena important phenomena i have brought to. more effect of intoxication is seen when blood alcohol concentration is increasing at 200 to 300 gram per deciliter bac there is alcohol blackout what is alcohol blackout some unpleasant memory doesn't get consolidated when the alcohol level is 200 to 300 milligram percent temporarily drinks enough alcohol temporarily block the transfer of memory from short term to long term this is the phenomenon of memory consolidation that happens in hippocampus and this consolidation is prevented when the blood alcohol uh, level is 200 to 300 gram per milligram percent and the patient uh, the patient mind do not register that unpleasant uh, memory jelinek classified alcoholics depending upon the genetics behavioral pattern social uh, uh, social uh, conditions and their emotional and uh, mental uh, makeup or uh, constitution that is alpha beta gamma delta and epsilon alpha is psychological dependence mainly he told three and two additional alpha beta and gamma he told mainly three alpha is psychological dependence upon alcohol physically physic, uh, uh, beta is physical complications cirrhosis pancreatitis is sab jab ho jata hai. that person is known as beta and gamma is physical dependence it is more physical dependence means if the patient doesn't consume alcohol that is going to give rise to physical symptoms there is another variety delta that is french alcoholism or withdrawal symptoms epsilon is dipsomania and drinks to death this is an impulsive drinking behavior seen commonly in soldiers and as jelinek defines or categorizes that abstinence is possible in alpha and beta alcoholics but it is very difficult in gamma alcoholics the most toughest of the patients of alcoholics classification that get that should be treated uh, that uh, can be treated is gamma very toughest to treat pollution and some treatment recommendations moral suasion pursue the person morally legal suasion ayush and complementary therapies and medicine therapy FDA recommended drugs, disulfiram, acamprosate, naltrexone, oral and injectable. There is one NGO, Alcoholic Anonymous. They are largely into the business. But business means into the activity. Into the activity of uh, handling or uh, the uh, counter uh, to treat alcoholism in people they are helping people in american uh, uh, in us this organization is established alcoholic anonymous and they recommend 12 step facilitation this is popularly known as tsf you can see that the first step is we admitted our powerlessness over our illness or drugs and alcohol that our lives had become unmanageable number two came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity number three made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of our higher power this this 12-step uh, uh, facilitation is very much recommended by National Institute of Alcohol Abuse, a Alcohol Use and Alcoholism. 
so this is medically recommended this uh, this uh, uh, alcoholic anonymous matlab uh, these uh, uh, their uh, their matlab uh, efforts are medically recommended number 4 made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves number 5 admitted to our higher power to ourselves and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs number 6 we are entirely ready to have our higher power remove all these defects of character number 7 humbly asked our higher power to remove our shortcomings number 8 made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make to them all number 9 made direct amends to such people wherever possible except when to do so would injure them or others number 10 continue to take personal inventory and when we were wrong promptly admitted it number 11 sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with our higher power praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry out that number 12 having had a spiritual awakening as the result of these steps we tried to carry this message to drug and alcohol addicts and to practice these principles in all our affairs thank you for all your patient hearing and cooperation <coughs> national institute of homeopathy <coughs> alumni association i would like to thank you and the part that is homeopathy part that has been left out i would like to cover up in one of the next sessions maybe in one or two months as maybe uh, uh, as maybe accommodated by the association as per their schedule thank you all hello hello yes sir i have finished i have finished uh, thank you dr jana for your very exhaustive work on this topic do the topic is very relevant and of course it's a very big topic and really that very nicely you have from the very ancient time to the uh, this very present this is different historical perspective from this different religious script and to the latest into the this actually medical standard book like the like uh, icd 11 dsm 4 you have covered very nicely everything and as a from the homeopathic fraternity everybody the viewer that we expect that what about the homeopathic perspective due to this paucity of time that is not possible to cover today and uh, we all we expect that nih alumni association that uh, they will arrange another session for the same where you will speak again and we will learn a lot uh, all this viewer including myself we gain many thing to learn from you that was totally unaware of though in our clinical practice is usual we have to handle many patient into the different form of alcoholism in their habit though it is very difficult to manage and where this only medical treatment is not sufficient there are the other modalities are required so thank you dr jana and dr jana dr jana just i am i am i audible am i audible am i audible yeah yeah you are audible with some disturbance okay with some disturbance uh, that may be technical anyway audio. actually uh, this we are very fortunate enough today that uh, both uh, the uh, today's speaker they bear narayan in their name and uh, the first narayan dr sib narayan jana we have heard about he is from the very uh, this first batch of nih uh, pg Uh, this train is the first batch of md home which is considered the best batch till now and uh, in addition to that he has 20 years of experience in homeopathic medical medica and uh, practice of medicine where at present in the department is practice of medicine professor and we personally indebted to dr sib narayan jana along with this many other friend batchmate and junior because he authored a book like this homeopathic mcq by dr jana and dr rath uh, his wife so now uh, we have to wait for this question answer session at the end of this session 
now without wasting much more time i would like to invite uh, dr another uh, narayan sir uh, dr dev narayan kollani sir everybody he is so well known so he uh, don't need any introduction but in spite of that uh, that uh, what i have gathered something some information about dr kollani sir so that he is a, a proud alumni of calcutta homeopathic medical college and hospital and sir has a background of bsc honors in physiology and when i hear sir many time that i like that it is very astonishing that from the into the field of this physiology and especially biochemistry sir is speaking so nicely and so easily that it is quite uh, like sort of the unexpected so i now i understand that it is due to his background in his usually into the physiology and in addition to that sir is usually what is happening having the total professional experience of in teaching and research of 33 years in which uh, his as per designation he worked as the assistant research officer but in addition to that he has to taught the, this he has to teach practice of medicine homeopathic medicine medica and the repertory in nih and before that at the birhu homeopathic medical college and hospital sir has published around 32 different articles, including research article. And everybody knows that Sir is the president of NIH Alumni Association. Everybody is eagerly waiting to hear Sir, not me. So I invite Dr. Kollani Sir. Sir, please. Sir's topic is a journey with 300 cases of degenerative joint disorders in NIH. That is the fourth phase today. So previous three pages, that was a very uh, this encouraging session. And uh, today, sir, please, you please continue, sir. Uh, many, many thanks, my beloved Professor Abdul Matin Mullah. Thanks to another Narayan Jana. Many thanks for the nice presentation. And many thanks to Bidut, Prada Sharma. On screen and out of screen, future years too. We are really very thankful to all the viewers, speakers, and participants. And we are def definitely being encouraged by your presence and participation to continue this CME. Up to the 71. Time. So, by request of the CME committee, I started a project, JAG with 300. Refused and so called incurable cases. Every year, hundreds and hundreds of cases of these refused and neglected cases in its OPD curing, in its OPD and IPD, gaining fame, and day by day, number of patients are increasing. Not even a single guy in the OPD who had through advertisement or by some other inspiration or by some other means. Simply one patient is getting cured, he is bringing another. This way, now OPD of this image is going near to 3,000 patients per day. Just imagine. None of the cases are with simple fever and diarrhea, and these are the common countries. Most of the cases, rather almost all cases, are truly chronic diseases, except very few. And I want to repeat a few words till now, till today that NIH is really a excellent institution of its excellency regarding curing of so-called incurable cases. Homeopathy is still surviving in the world simply for the cure of incurable and refused cases, never for some acute diseases. In the area of 1986, after one year of my joining, I told you the history. I was inspired by 11 number of top ranking scientist of Jadopul Cultivation of Science by advising me 
you do not waste your time to find out how alcohol molecules are being converted into some nafsuika brown etc molecules and how the binning molecules vehicle molecules are changing into some material molecules with their, its character it is a very mysterious thing science especially physics it is a matter of physics nano physics has not yet reached to that extent they are telling in the era of 1986 just imagine science especially physics has not yet reached to that extent to find out how the properties of nasuic acid being carried to alcohol or sugar blend it is not your job it is our job but we will not entertain this your searching because we will not be allowed to do this by the government or the institution the only thing you can do you go on curing cases with documentation go on increasing public praise automatically that huge number of public praise will reach to the government government will take interest out of it they will insist us help us then we will start this project maybe after 100 years from the day simply you go on curing the cases refused or neglected cases with documentation i was inspired by them and later on i was inspired by the many of the renowned allopathic doctors and homeopathic doctors in national of homeopathy those who used to come as guest lecturer or honorable professors and from the very beginning i had one attempt to keep documentation to increase my confidence and to increase the confidence of my students and the profession but if this infrastructure which is not that much strong in i i had to start with clinical trials then gradually gradually during the working on cases with clinical trials by aggregating few cases specially selected from the opd outdoors ratio encounter i started working on it and during the work i found marvelous miraculous results that is astonishing one of them is digital joint disease this is the fourth phase we are having another two phases left today we will talk about two serious type of disease serious in the sense i told you before that degenerative joint is such a disease which neither it can be prevented nor it can be cured by any system of medicine as per literature is concerned simply it can be managed by physiotherapy painkillers vitamin d etc but fortunately during the course of this clinical trials by administering constitutional drugs in nhopd and ipd we found surprisingly homeopathic medicines can cure this type of degenerative joint disease of various kinds first day i had one brief first phase brief abstract of degenerative joint disease disease, disease and treatment second phase we had regeneration of cartilaginous tissue especially intervertebral disc regeneration which is a massive disorder this massive surgery third phase we talked about osteophytes and subluxation with documentations number of cases we have shown that homeopathic medicines can cure which is being certified by expert radiologist our respected colonel nondi from our x-ray department and other famous doctors from other laboratories on the excel reports so they will concentrate one of the fragments of degenerative joint disease serious disease that is sclerosis first we'll talk about the sclerosis what is it what is sclerosis it is a serious type of disease as you might be knowing that leukoplakia on mouth or tongue is the precursor beginning of cancer of tongue or mouth cavity immediately take step of it get its biopsy serological test to exclude cancer means leukoplakia cannot be ignored at any cost because it invites usually turns into serious disease exactly similar somehow it looks like leukoplakia on the bone sclerotic changes on the bone or inside the bone is called as sclerosis of the bone which is precursor or beginning of serious type of bone disease especially malignancy sarcoma now let us first 
see few pictures by which we will be able to understand how much serious it is. Is my slicer visible? Or go? Or go? Our best ranger, if my slides are visible, I don't see that in my screen. Yeah, thank you very much. Now, these are the pictures, collected pictures to emphasize how serious sclerosis disease is. Once a radiologist finds sclerosis, it will put note of it and immediately instruct the patient for necessary investigation to exclude malignant type of diseases. If it is found in the one place, like lipoplatia, it is alarming. If it is found more than one place, it is very serious. Now, what happens? What is the fate? Why you are afraid of this sclerosis? This picture will tell you. But this is, let us concentrate. First one, the ultimate, if it is not being treated or it is neglected, ultimately it turns into very serious disease. Most unfortunate thing is that in sclerosis of disease, preliminary there are no symptoms. In later phase, when periostal is involved, stretched or affected, then gradually, gradually symptom starts. Usually it occurs around the joints, in and around the joints, then it spreads throughout the body. The first serious disease from the leukopathy happens, fibrous dysplasia. See the picture, how it looks like. This is fibrous dysplasia. Then, osteochondroma. There are three types of osteochondroma. One is pedunculated, one is sessile, another is cauliflower like. Next change is means serious changes if this erosion is neglected. This is anastosis or bone islands. Another serious disease is osteomyelitis or other aggressive lesions. This type of aggressive osteomyelitis is in black dark patients. Then simply, simple or unique camera bone cyst. Here is a cyst. Single cavity. Then is aneurysmal bony cyst. Multiple segments in between. In that bone, is that this becomes cystic. Then another is osteoid osteoma. Then another serious disease is Ewing sarcoma. One sort of cancer, the cancerous type. Early stage of the osteomyelitis. Your sclerosis looks like this faint deepening of the bony tissue. Next serious disease is enchondroma, leading to us malignancy. Then it is chondroblastoma. Then is osteosarcoma. Another serious disease is non ossified fibroma. So these are the few serious type of bone disease. Neither it can be prevented, nor it can be cured. Simply surgical measures are usually taken to control to some extent, sometimes massive excision of the limbs or massive operations needed up to the level of amputation. This is another picture of scanning, whole body scan. You see the darkening spaces of the bone. This area is getting sclerosed gradually. This is lighter area, more lighter, more deeper, very deepest area, then hip, hip joint, then shoulder, knee, then sternum, sternocleo, clavicle and sternal junction, knees, nasal bones. These are the common traces of a picture of sclerosis. How does it look like? Primarily sclerosis look like this, light whitish patch on the bones. 
this is more lighter this area here is another patches of white patches light white patch this would be very carefully observed by the radiologist and they will give the report these are the whitened areas next are the dots this whole like small hole like pictures and the picture is for the details these are the sclerotic areas gradually increasing in number another picture of cervical spine what we are getting see these bones is giving some white in dots these are the sclerosis area due to this sclerosis the intervertebral space and the vertebral columns has become distorted giving rise to disc compression on the spine and the spinal cord getting narrowed under compression this is much later phase when the patient will start complaining seriously but in the early stage it become very difficult to assess as it happens to the complexity of mouth this is a picture of multiple sclerosis sclerosis may happen anywhere not only on bones sclerosis may happen on centrally orbitally visual areas then laryngeal box throat musculoskeletal system i have i have told you then different types of sensation what usually complains patient gives if it affect in the central system means central nervous system it will give the symptoms of fatigue cognitive impairment depression anxiety unstable mood if these complaints persisting and gradually increasing we should not forget to have on scan of the brain to find out the lesion then the visual areas there may be nystagmus optic neuritis diplopia in the speech this side here throat dysphagia musculoskeletal weakness spray spasms ataxia sensation in different areas according to the involvement pain hypostasia paresthesia bowel incontinence diarrhea or constipation in urinary bladder incontinence frequency of retention frequency of retention of urine now what i want to emphasize is any of this complaints is persisting for a long time gradually increasing in intensity and areas we must be very cautious to exclude sclerosis because this might lead to fatal diseases sclerostic bone lesion as i was told as i was telling early primary primarily this will look like this it, as, as if some white patches has been given on the bone this is whitening area this is normal bone tissue and this radiological picture This is closed. Posterior sarcoma. Usually, common ages: zero to ten years, posterior sarcoma; ten to twenty years, posterior sarcoma; fibrous dysplasia; eosinophilic granuloma; osteoid osteoma; osteoblastoma. From forty to twenty to forty years, enchondroma; osteoma. bone island parasta parastial osteosarcoma parastial chondrosarcoma heel lesion nof eg sdc abc chondroblastoma more than 40 years metastasis chondrosarcoma bone island all ages infection so for all the ages infection is common superadded infection leading to some other complication including osteomyelitis rest of the diseases are very fatal if it cannot be detected early patient is going for fatality gradually this is another picture of dorsal spine 
it is clearly visible. See the sclerotic changes in the vertebral body. This white white patch, this one, these patches. Patient in late stage will complain of back pain. If we are not very serious, simply we stick to some moderate moderate medicine after drive. The pain for the time being may be reduced as palliation, but the case will progress to hospitality. So we should not ignore if the complaints persist for a long period or recurrency or common medicines are failing. This is another picture, number one. This see the pharyngeal bones. Sclerosis. Here are the sclerotic spots. Here are sclerotic spots. We are not that much expert in radiology. That's why we take the help of radiologists. Nowadays, many times we find that patients are provided only the place, not the reports. You should ask the patient to bring the reports too, because plate may be given to the te technician also. Simply taking one photography and handing over the plate to the patient is not enough. That must be observed critically by one expert that is radiologist. So without radiologist advice, sign report, no extra plate should be entertained medically. This is my experience I am telling you. Here I see the skeletal lesion has been shown. In cervical spines, these are the sclerotic areas leading to weakening, weakening, compression, disc prolapse. Here is also this intervertebral disc prolapse, compression to the central canal, spinal nerve, leading to various types of compression. This is scan picture. This is another scan picture, compression and pressure on the spinal cord. Early sclerosis usually doesn't give much indications. But if it is late, then you will give various type of complaints. Less than 30 years, usually the pictures come in this type, as we are finding. Ossified NOF, osteoid osteoma, osteochondroma, enchondroma, osteosarcoma. Exactly, if you very critically follow the your not normal X-ray, but a final X-ray, you will be able to assess this type of lesions. Here is another thing: metastasis, bone infections. Parosteal osteosarcoma, chondrosarcoma, enchondroma, ossified in wave. Low grade, high grade chondrosarcoma. So, we are not that much afraid of sclerosis, but you are afraid of this type of serious diseases. Multisystemic effects of multiple sclerosis. Last picture I showed you, this is another picture that from cerebral cortex to knee joint. Anywhere, this type of pathology we can find, which ultimately lead to serious disease. Now, these are a brief little information. This has careful and serious regarding the disease. Now, what homeopathy says? Homeopathy says that this sarcoma can be cured, not only arrested, not only prevented, but it can completely cure the pathology, which is usually unbelievable. But accidental reports, I told you, we had the clinical trial because all the means of research were not available in any. During the course of clinical trial, we insisted patient to bring extra reports all the time. But we know the patients in our OPD are very poor, financially low, intellectually poor. Naturally, they didn't listen to our advices. Many of the patients usually do not bring extra plates. Many patients bring extra plates being refused by the other system of medicine or for long continued alcohol treatment. 
and physiotherapy, they got fed up and didn't come. They had one exception. But we ask for follow up exception, they usually neglect, start neglecting. So, anyway, incidentally, few patients were convinced and it got exception from inside and outside. There, we found many changes. Few I have shown you. Now, today we will show you the sclerosis. Here, this area you are finding white, white, thick in small spots. This is a view of the lumbar sacral spine. This lateral view of the spine. See the bony margins. These areas, sclerotic changes. See the report by Dr. Kipin on the Brigadier Corner. Dr. K. P. Nundi. You can see later on. See osteitis. Sclerotic lesions, sclerotic lesions, both joints. Another AP view, lateral view. Normal study of AS spine. Not only sclerosis has gone off, but also other lesions of the bone has become completely vanished. Simply there is little loss of lordosis due to muscle spasm, which will automatically go off after getting the pathological cures. Moreover, you will be astonished to know that for this type of treatment, usually many things are cared, like vitamin D, calcium level, vitamin C, etc. etc. But because we had the clinical trials, we did not restrict or advise anything to the patient for other measures, including physiotherapy. The cases which very severe complaint, not easily controllable, only those cases we advise warm application, hot application, restriction of movement, and few common exercises. But the skilled exercise means the exercise given by the physiotherapist, learned physiotherapist, have not been provided and that was not available in NIH2, which could give patient additional support for curing. So whatever we are finding in the reports is completely on homeopathy medicine, not even at least by physiotherapy or, supp or supplementation or vitamin D supplementation, calcium supplementation, diet therapy, etc. Simply by the medicines, we got the changes. And it is possible. Reports are telling you. This is lateral view, sclerotic lesions. Let us see the reports. Relatively reduced posterior disc space, sclerotic anterior osteophytes in the vertebral shadows. AP view, lateral view, not very clear because it is already extended, not digital. Simply see loss of lordosis. And relatively reduced all posterior D spaces shown, no sign of sclerosis, completely sclerosis vanished. Another case of L spine, sclerotic lesions, lateral view. In digital X ray, it will be more clear. Reduce these spaces between L5 L6 with sclerotic adjacent adjacent vertebral adjacent vertebral. So 
Here is the similar shape. Let me show it making bigger. Sorry. I will show you that. Sorry. Is it visible clearly with sclerosis, adjacent plates, stones? Next, after treatment, AP view, lateral view. Simply, lot of lordosis is there. Loss of lordosis means when vertebral body is under stress. Muscle usually create muscle cell ligament usually create hypertonic effect. To keep the vertebra in normal position, they start then by which vertebral bodies are kept away from the other vertebra that disturb the normal curvature of the spine. That is for loss of lordosis. Means the pathology has been cured. Still, the system has become not yet normalized. Still, vertebral columns are under support of sprain or strain ligaments and muscles. That is why no sclerosis. I think this is clearly visible. No need of magnifying. AP view, lateral view. Make me larger one. Is it clear? See the sclerosis. Okay. Subluxation with ilal sclerosis, not in vertebra. Subluxation, ilal sclerosis. After treatment, there is no sclerosis. Simply loss of lordosis. Likely from back muscle spasm. Let me magnify this one, this place. Loss of lordosis, likely spasm. No sclerosis. This is another report of outside. See the report. Irregular patchy sclerosis and old healing fracture seen in the calcaneum. Osteoporosis, osteoarthritis changes. Let us see the next. So, in this state, three seizure diseases at a time sclerosis, old fracture, osteoporosis, osteoarthritis changes. Osteoporosis is another serious disease. We have document, documentation in OPD9 that osteoporosis can also be cured without any additional help. Means take calcium, take vitamins, this and that, without taking any other means, dietary or physiotherapy. Osteoporosis can be cured simply by the consumption of individual street drug. In later future, I will try to show you. See the pictures sclerosis. Osteophytic changes and the entire bones has become osteoporotic, lighter bones. See the report of the patient. Only this osteophyte means calcareous far is thin, old fracture is still there, calcic is there, no lytic or sclerotic initial shield. Though the osteoporosis and sclerotic changes are completely vanished. And if you want to see the time, let me show you how much time is it take. It varies from patient to patient. But still, from the report, this one 518. First report.
फाइव एटीन इलेवन फाइव नाइनटीन क्लियर सो विद इन वन इयर कॉम्प्लीट ऑस्ट्रोपोलोसिस एंड स्किलोटिक रिच एडवांस बाय होम्योपैथिक मेडिसिन Here is another case. Osteopathic changes. Second, look. Let me show you the pictures. See the changes. Osteopathic changes. Clear regression here and there. See the report. Osteoclerotic changes seen in the greater diversity of the humerus. Osteoporotic changes in the greater diversity of the humerus. These are osteoporotic changes. No fracture or bony abnormality seen in the right shoulder. Sclerosis completely vanished. How much time was taken? Let me show you. The date was Clearances of the shoulder joint, such a serious disease, can also be cured. So anyway, this I have shown you. So these are the documentations of curing of sclerosis. Now, what I want to tell you. That ask patients whenever comes with any bony disease or pain or discomfort, which one X-ray plates, AP and laser, or other necessary angles, without X-ray plates or without reports, please try one habit of not seeing the patients or not entertaining. You take the case history, conclude yourself, ask the patients. You take this medicine, but you should come with the X-ray plates. to make me confirm and to make you confident that what is the disease how long approximately time will be taken whether it will be cured by homeopathic medicine or not it is today it is already 53 madam can i continue or today we will make and make it at end because the i will show you in the next session how spondylosis with different types of degenerative disorders can be completely normal radiologically plus about two more than two dozens of degenerative joint diseases completely radiologically cured and other different types of diseases from degenerative joint diseases like osteomyelitis osteoporosis rheumatoid arthritis थियोरिटिकल एस्पेक्ट एंड आफ्टर दैट दिस हाउ नाइसली यू हैुमेंटेड देशेस इन देंस ऑफ like there of the very modern facilities of investigation and in the absence of other supportive therapy like physiotherapy single handedly documentation apart from the curing documentation was it was very difficult in spite of you have done so nicely and you are sharing with us 
that is that is and very encouraging because the result you have shown sir with your document thus perhaps in uh, a year or two of practice we can think one or two of such cases of your or this actually positive changes but such a huge number of cases with the successive not only symptomatic relief this their changes into their uh, this x ray or into this mri report that is usually is very encouraging and will inspire this uh, the your ne- next generation of homeopaths like us that we should we can homeopathy can do this thing if we can dedicate the this is devote ourselves into the field of homeopathy and now uh, it is the time for this viewer so after hearing this two very nice presentation from the two expert this narayan uh, speakers so uh, of course the viewer should have uh, many question so i will uh, ask the your uh, dr vidyut mukherji sir so please uh, let the speaker know what are the different questions so that can answer uh, uh thanks to both the speakers respected kalyani sir and dr jana uh, but unfortunately i think our uh, tonight we don't have any questions in the uh, question chat box however it it seems that uh, our speakers had been uh, very elaborate had been able to answer uh, moreover if there are a, now one question came on the screen uh, can you just one minute Are there, please, can you put it on the screen? Yes, yes. What are the electropatho electropathogenesis relation of WK syndrome WKS with vitamin B1 thiamine deficiency of uh, and heavy uses of different types of wines, alcohol intakes in This is question one. Well, Doctor Pravir Majumdar. Uh, I think uh, alcohol means it goes to. Uh, this is a very, very, uh, I would say, pinpointing question. Uh, there is no answer to this uh, different types of wines. Alcohol interferes in thiamine metabolism. and thereby decreasing the b1 level and that gives rise to the warning corsak of syndrome but uh, as you have raised the point that different types of wines ultimately different types of wine when you say wine it is distilled alcohol and all are ethyl alcohol people use just ethyl alcohol only we do not use methyl alcohol for drinking or isopropyl alcohol for drinking we only use ethyl alcohol and the metabolism when you say different types of wines it is same with all alcohol uh, matlab uh, metabolism of ethyl alcohol only so there is no difference in different types it interferes with thiamine metabolism and thereby decreasing the uh, b1 level and producing korsakoff syndrome and in all kinds of alcoholism treatment this is a must give treatment that matlab adding all the alcohol uh, habit disrupting medicines like disulfiram and all naltrexon and all uh, the withdrawal symptoms everywhere uh, or when there is delirium tremens and other ipd treatment for uh, patients of alcoholism in all cases b1 giving b1 is compulsory thank you uh thank you so much thank dr jana so uh, for your
not uh, no further questions yet. Uh, uh, to uh, Dr. Uh, Mothin's uh, request and suggestion, and also getting the second part of this uh, uh, speech of Dr. Jana. Uh, we'll we'll try to get it in the upcoming CME. Uh, just we'll have a meeting and we'll let uh, both the speakers know very shortly. So Dr. Jana, if you're uh, Jana, if you're available on the first uh, second uh, Sunday of uh, June, uh, please let us know. Uh, sir, then we sir, sir, second Sunday we can accommodate over uh, there. Uh, I'll be out with some personal work. Uh, I'll let 11th you know, of June. I will let okay, you know, no sir, in personal week. Okay. Uh, second week of June. Okay. I shall be there in some personal assignment uh, and out of Delhi. So probably it will not be able, able to able for me uh, to uh, go for in the second week of June. I'll let you know in a personal window, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure, sure. Please try to come. Uh, now it's a request. Uh... Kalani, sir, has told something, sir. Sir, would you repeat, sir? I couldn't get you. Not only just present subject, but also we invite you for multiple subjects, your experiences. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. My, my pleasure, sir. My pleasure, sir. My pleasure, sir. Please, my pleasure, please sir. come forward. I encourage others to come forward. Okay. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Sure, sure. Thank, Thank you. Professor, nothing to. We are. Platform for the alumni. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, help sir. each other. Yes, sir. It's a platform to help others to help themselves. Like uh, Kalani, yes, sir. sir. Just uh, it's in the by the end of this CME. Yesterday night, I got. A uh, not alumni of NIH, but attachment from other of, of uh, Professor Roger. Now, they are asking relating to research methodology and some other aspects. So, I just suggested her and share the link of our uh, YouTube channel. You please go through the topics here and set up which uh, your queries will be resolved from our 70 episodes. Today is the 71st. So, uh, Professor Mati, uh, Martin, Abdul Martin, uh, then Dr. Jan, uh, Professor Jana, Professor Rajot. Uh, Professor Rajot had uh, uh, given his date for uh, a solo spe uh, soul speaker. As a soul speaker, a uh, solo speaker for a very important topic. So it's a request to all the alums across the globe. Whoever are interested, just share your thoughts. Just share your thoughts. Come on with your topics. Uh, there are, uh, like uh, we have some other avenues, uh, new avenues, therapy, then hospital administration, hospital management, uh, public health administration, a lot of things which our Ayush doctors, uh, especially homeopathic doctors, can take part in. And it's a request. Uh, we have versatile topics to and through to discuss, uh, to share, to enrich our knowledge through each other's sharing, which our president, Dr. Kalyani sir, has been advocating since day one. Also, we have the uh, blessings of uh, Dr. Professor Niranjan Mahanti, sir, uh, Dr. Chatur Bhujnayak, Dr. Eshwara Dash, and to name lots, all our seniors. Moreover, uh, another humble request to all alumni that uh, our bank account details are given at the description. Uh, please renew your membership. It's a mere uh, amount had developed a benevolent fund under chairmanship and uh, guidelines of Kalyani and 
uh, which is intended to help a lot of alumni of NIH in distress. So the details are given in the description. Our respected Kalyani sir, uh, the latest call of uh, the session tonight, sir. And Kalyani sir. Uh, with depth of love to everyone, we we simply want to recover, regain our relationship, sweet relationship of Nasir Shahuji. Many thanks to all of you. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And with this, we are returning uh, to our backstage editor. Good night and wish you all to stay happy and stay healthy. Over to you, Mariko Orko Mukherjee.